Hi, this is Dominic Köppel from Kyushu University and I want to present you a solution of how to compute repair in small space. First, what is repair? Repair is a grammar compression where we replace the bigram with the highest frequency recursively until there is no bigram left with a frequency larger than 1. A bigram is a string of length 2 and the bigram frequency is the number of all non-overlapping occurrences of a bigram in the text. In practice, repair achieves very high compression ratios, but current algorithms need a lot of memory. In this talk, we focus on integer alphabets. So sigma denotes an integer alphabet and t a string on it of length n. So, when we want to store a bigram along with its frequency, we need this amount of bits, where a frequency is of at most n over 2. Let's have a look at algorithms computing repair. In this table I show algorithms computing repair in expected linear time. The first one, due to Larson and Moffat, who also presented repair, need 5n words as dominant term. Next one needs 12n bytes and this one due to Billy and others are improved versions where the dominant term is 2 plus epsilon n or 1 plus epsilon n words where epsilon is a constant between 0 and 1. But here we focus on solutions that need even less space. And for that, we first think about an algorithm that computes repair in place. So naively, how much time do we need? First, we need to find the most frequent bigram, and this takes squared time. And because there are at most n non-terminals, this gives us n cubed time. And here we want to improve on this solution and we came up with an algorithm that works either in n squared or in n squared times something for broadward techniques time. And our space limit is n times log max n tau bits, including the text space, where tau is the number of terminals and non-terminals, and we can restore the text with additional order log n bits. For all of that, we need the following two tools. The first tool is that we can sort an array of lengths n in place in n log n time, which is due to heap sort. With tool 1, we can, given an integer d, compute the d most frequent bigrams in n squared log d over d time while using 2d times the space for storing a bigram along with its frequency plus log n bits. And how we can do that is shown in the following pseudocode. So you can see here that we have two while loops and the idea is that our algorithm works in rounds and turns where a round has multiple turns. The outer while loop corresponds to the rounds while the inner while loop corresponds to the turns. At the start of a round we compute a frequency table f with tool 2 and parameter d set to fk where fk is the number of bigrams we can store during the case round and it's set to constant in the beginning. Next we set a threshold tk to the minimum frequency stored in f and then we start with the turns. In a turn we determine the most frequent bigram by polling f. Let's say this is bc. Next we replace all occurrences of BC in TI with a new non-terminal, let's say X 
i plus 1. And ti denotes the text in the ith turn. And the result is ti plus 1. Then we end the turn and remove all bigrams whose frequencies drop below the threshold from f. Next, we add new bigrams to f that have this new introduced non-terminal as a character whenever the frequencies are above the threshold. Each turn takes order n amortized time and we end the round whenever the frequency table f becomes empty and then we count the gain space during the case round and add it up to fk plus 1 and finally we, we end the round. In total we end the algorithm whenever there is no longer any bigram that has a frequency of more than one. To understand how a turn works in detail, let's have a look at the following example where t is given by the positions 1 to 21 and the frequency table f in the following positions comprising three bigrams where AB and CA are the bigrams with the highest frequency 5 and AA the bigram with the lowest frequency 3. Consequently 3 is our threshold in the following. What we do during this turn is first to determine the bigram with the highest frequency, which is for instance AB, and replace all occurrences of AB with a new non-terminal, let's say X1, which is done in the second row. Consequently, the frequency of AB drops down to 0, but also the frequency of CA drops down to 1. That's because occurrences of CA got replaced by the x1. However, there are other new diagrams like this cx1 appearing multiple times now and it may be that we have now to add cx1 to f to determine this new frequencies we use a temporary character array D. To get D we first shift all freed up space to the right which gives us five places which is also the number of replacements. Next we look at all characters to the left of the occurrences of X1 which is for instance the C or this C, and put these characters into D. Next, we sort D with an in-place integer sorting algorithm. Such that we have for each character an interval, and the interval tells us the number of occurrences of this character. For instance, the C occurs four times, which means that the bigram CX1 has the frequency 4 and 4 is larger than our threshold 3 so we add CX1 to F. Next by symmetry we look at all characters to the right of X1 and put these characters into D. Sort again but now we see that these intervals have all just length 2 and 2 is less than our threshold. So we discard these bigrams. And this concludes the first turn. So we have computed f here successfully.
Now let's have a look at the time complexity. We can show that there is a constant gamma larger than 1 such that fk, so the number of bigrams we can store, is omega gamma to the power of k. Consequently, there are roughly at most log n rounds, since we can maintain all bigrams, at least in the order log nth round. And that's because when k is roughly about log n, fk is already roughly n. During the case round, when we compute f with tool 2, this costs us n squared log fk over fk time by setting the parameter d to fk. Now when we sum up all time costs for each round, this gives us this expression and doing the sum gives us order n squared time. Now the nice thing is that all these techniques work within a broadward approach. So we can search a bigram and replace its occurrences in log tau n bits within log 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 n time, where this time comes from the pop count function. And tau is again the total number of terminals and non-terminals. So each turn takes within this concept n times the time for the pop count function divided by the benefits for the broadward search amortized time. And we can implement tool 2 alternatively by a naive approach using n squared time times the broadward techniques. So we have now two different implementations of tool 2 and this gives us this minimum function and doing the math gives us this time bound. We can sum this up and this gives us these two solutions and the solution of the final time complexity of our proposed algorithm. And this also concludes my talk. Thanks for watching.